Kia ora. This is Christina Hoppner from the Mahara Project at Catalyst IT in Te Whangaroi Atara, Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Today, I'd like to introduce an idea to you that our team is currently working on, on behalf of one of our clients. We will make it available in Mahara 23.04, which is scheduled to be released in the second half of April 2023. Take note that I'm showing you a number of mockups. The final version may look a bit different and some details may also work slightly differently. I'm planning on making another video to demonstrate the entire workflow once we have everything implemented, but would like to share the idea already with you so you can start thinking if you'd like to give it a go when it is available on your instance of Mahara. While you are watching this video, you may ask, what about this? Could we also do X or Y? Why didn't you think about Z? These are all great questions and we'll be happy to discuss them with you for future enhancements to the functionality. As always, when a new feature is added to Mahara, there is a particular use case for it. We then see how we can develop the functionality to meet our clients' requirements, yet also see how it can be generic enough to suit other people. We achieve that by creating settings where possible or making sure that a feature can be used in multiple institutions without being too limited. From that point forward, we welcome conversations around enhancements to make the new functionality even more versatile. We are grateful to all community members who sponsor new features and bug fixes, either by engaging our Mahara core team at Catalyst or by commissioning work through another business partner or by contributing code themselves. Now, let's take a look at what the new functionality is all about. You can read the specifications on our Mahara wiki page that I'm linking to in the description. We are calling this outcomes portfolio and it is suited for portfolios that are connected to learning outcomes or goals and where the progress needs to be tracked. Initially, this functionality is implemented on the group level to allow students and their learning support staff to collaborate on the portfolios, even if it is only that staff set up the outcomes and then students add their evidence and reflections all the way to staff also being able to add evidence on behalf of the students. Therefore, we are creating a new group type that holds those permissions and allows us to lock things from editing by regular group members. Now I'm going to take you through a number of mockups that make up that new functionality in order to show you what it will look like in Mahara. So let's assume that we have set up a group um, and enabled the outcomes portfolio functionality. So now when a group administrator is setting up a portfolio collection, they have the possibility to say that it is an outcomes portfolio. We are also implementing outcomes categories because those were important to the client to um, yeah, categorize the outcomes and uh, therefore we made sure that in future you can have different outcomes for different institutions or even within a single institution. Now once you've set up this initial page for the collection, you are then immediately taken to the next page where you can set up outcomes. So if you think about a normal Mahara collection, the next step of course would be for you to add pages to a collection. However, in this case, we first need to define our outcomes. You can define as many outcomes as you like. At the moment, we have um, the possibility to give each outcome a short title which is then displayed on the page, a full title in case there is um, longer information available that, is, uh, that makes the outcome more detailed. And then there is an outcome type that is currently hard-coded in the database. And 
is matched up with a particular outcome category. You then add new outcomes by clicking the add an outcome link. And once you're done, you are taken to the outcomes overview page. Now, because this is a mock-up, um, there are the numbers which then in the specifications refer to the text explanations. And uh, therefore, I left them in there so that you can look them up later on yourself. Now, if you take a look at this portfolio, this overview page, it does bear some resemblance to the portfolio completion functionality because we wanted to already reuse some of the functionality that we have in Mahara that has been useful and um, add the outcomes on top of that. So at the top of this overview page, you have the overall completion of outcomes for a quick overview of how far you are already in, how many outcomes are already completed. And then in the collapsibles, in these panels here, you have the outcome itself. So where it says number five and number seven, those are the short titles of the outcomes. And you can uncollapse one of those panels in order to see the long description here identified by number nine, the outcome type number 10, and then you can add pages directly to this particular outcome. Then the group administrator or group tutor can mark outcomes as completed, which is then tracked in the panel header itself. But they can also mark the individual activities that are being completed in order to complete an outcome as uh, completed as well. And uh, the decision was to make every or to give every activity a single Mahara page. And that's what you can do here then that you can add an activity or if you want to go with a generic language that you have in your Mahara site with a page, then you click this button here. So instead of needing to set up the pages before you create the collection, or once you have the collection, need to go outside of the collection and set up a page and then add it to the collection, what we've done here is um, give you the possibility to immediately create a page within the collection and also within the correct outcome. And there are a couple of other fields that are important like support taking place and progress. Now this overview page is what an instructor or learning support team member sees. And because they are allowed to make changes, um, in particular the group admins, they see the settings button so that they can go back to the outcomes page and define new out additional outcomes or correct existing outcomes. If you're looking at the same page um, as group member, so that is the learner whose portfolio this is, then they don't have all of those buttons available. So they, for example, cannot change the outcomes and they cannot add pages or add activities to their portfolio. So in this case, the structure of the portfolio is very well predefined and students cannot make any changes. So this could be an area in the future in Mahara where we allow students more freedom to also add pages to their portfolio. And as you can already see there, we, we are thinking of potentials for changing things around in the future, depending also on what feedback we get from the community. Um, for the time being, um, it is implemented so that a group administrator or a group tutor needs to predefine the pages that are added to a collection. The students can also not um, decide whether support is taking place or not. So that is something provided directly by the group administrator or tutor. And also the progress is a note by the tutor themselves. 
So this is the outcomes overview page, which allows you to track the completion of the overall outcomes. And as you can see here, we have the outcome completion and then we also still have the sign off and if you like also the verification of the individual activities that is tracked. So we track quite a bit in this portfolio. What we wanted to achieve though as well is that it's not overwhelming and everything is being displayed all the time. That's why the outcomes are collapsible in order to just see the outcomes and then drill in deeper if you want to know the details. Now onto the activity pages. So once an instructor has set up the outcomes, there we want to go deeper into individual activities because they are also structured. And that's what then happens on the page settings screen where you have your normal page title, page description and tags. But in addition, you now have a new page type altogether in which you can add more information about what is supposed to happen on this page. So that goes beyond the instruction field that is also available, of course, still in um, on a page because here it is for a particular page and then you could still have instructions for more step by step uh, guidance of what students are to do. So we've got the activity description that is now a longer version of the page title to be quite explicit of what is expected from a student here. You can also assign a subject if you have set subjects in the database. You can also uh, mention if there is a particular tutor or administrator who is responsible for tracking this activity. So while th there might be two or five people working with a student, there is typically also one person who is responsible for a particular activity, making sure that the student uh, completes it and also uh, learns what is to be learned here. You can also give a start date and an end date for this activity. Those are currently not really tracked or there's no warnings or reminders um, that could be functionalities though for the future. Last but not least, there are also levels of achievement for particular for the particular activity and actually not just for the activity but really for progress through that activity as we'll see when we get to the page in a second. Now once you've uh, set up all of these activity page details you can go to the activity page itself. Here it is seen in the edit mode um, so the portfolio hasn't been completed yet. And what you can see there is at the top, of course, the, the short title of the portfolio, then the longer description of the activity. We also display the outcome, which we get because the page has been created within a particular outcome on our outcomes overview page. We also display the outcome type and whether the activity has been completed or not. Now, a number of pieces of information that are displayed that weren't on the activity setup screen are the uh, um, strategies and support because those are free text fields, then resources that the um, learning support staff member uses and other learning support details that they might want to share. The outcomes portfolio functionality also comes with a new block type, which we are calling checkpoint. And it does look somewhat similar to the peer assessment block because it allows you to place a comments block onto a page in multiple areas. So you're not just bound to the comments at the bottom of the page, but you can add comments wherever you like. And in this case, the, the block 
displays comments for progress that students have made. And that is where the achievement levels come in because on the checkpoint you decide how well the student has achieved that particular part of the activity and comments can be left by everybody who has access to that portfolio. Then students and also staff can add evidence and reflections below a particular checkpoint and they can add another checkpoint and you can add as many checkpoints as you like. These checkpoints themselves are not tracked except for on the checkpoint block. What we are tracking though is the, what is it achieved here, but really is the, the sign off. So yeah, the language will definitely be made sure that it is unified uh, on all the screens. And that is the, the sign off functionality, which is then piped through to the outcomes overview page and displayed um, in the table of the individual activities. This was the high level overview of the outcomes portfolio functionality that I wanted to share with you today. I'm stoked that we can make such a big new feature available in Mahara to support the working with structured portfolios, collaborative portfolios, and also see what you want to make out of that in your own practice if you're not having exactly that same use case. So we always look forward to feedback and uh, once it is available directly in Mahara, that of course makes it easier for you to test. But if you do want to test it already before then, because the development work is well underway and certain parts are already finished, then uh, you are very welcome to also pull the development code and give it a go yourself. So we look forward to hearing from you in 2023. And as I mentioned earlier, there will be a demonstration of what the functionality looks like in Mahara itself. So not just with mockups. So once we have the development work finished, uh, I'll make a new video and you'll be able to watch it and follow the workflow along. <laughs>